Hi, Cool Worlders. My name is Nick Stone. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Columbia University, and I'm here today to talk about this week's Nobel Prize in Physics, which was awarded to three leaders in the LIGO project, a decades-long quest to detect gravitational waves, which are often thought of as ripples in the fabric of space-time. Gravitational waves are one of the biggest untested, or maybe more accurately, unseen, predictions of Einstein's theory of general relativity. General relativity is modern physics's most advanced understanding of how the force of gravity works in the universe. This theory was first formulated by Albert Einstein in 1915, and in certain limits it's equivalent to its predecessor, Newtonian gravity, which for many centuries was the state of the art in understanding how the force of gravity works. But in other limits, relativity represents a radical reconceptualization of the force of gravity in nature. In the classical Newtonian picture, gravity is an invisible and instantaneous force connecting any two objects with mass that draws those two objects closer and closer together. But in general relativity, gravity is both more complex and more elegant. In Einstein's picture of relativity, we all live in a four-dimensional space-time, and this space-time is curved by the presence of massive objects. The curvature induced by mass warps the fabric of space-time and affects the movement of any object, planets, stars, you and me. We all try to move on straight lines, but we do this in a curved space-time, and our trajectories in this curved space-time follow curves that represent the influence of gravity. In the Einsteinian picture of general relativity, gravity is nothing more than the curvature of space-time, which guides the motion of everything in it. In most regions of the universe, space-time is stiff, it's static, it, it's almost fixed and constant in time. It changes, but only in very slow ways. But if you put a lot of mass into a small volume and then accelerate it very quickly, the accelerations of that mass deform space-time very quickly, and ripples or waves propagate outward. These are gravitational waves, which had been predicted since Einstein's theory of relativity was first published at the beginning of the 20th century. But these gravitational waves were only detected directly in the last few years by the LIGO experiment, and that's what the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for this week. So now that we know what gravitational waves are, astrophysicists like myself like to ask where are they coming from? Well, if the requirement is that you have a lot of mass in a very small volume, and it has to be accelerating very quickly, that sounds to me like you're talking about black holes. Black holes are another unique prediction of Einstein's theory of general relativity. They represent what happens when you put so much mass into such a small volume that nothing, not even light, can escape from them. The relativistic picture of a black hole is that you have the mass of a star, or an even greater amount of mass, that's been squished into a tiny region it's been squished so far that it collapses in an unstoppable way into a point of infinite density, a so-called singularity. This singularity is shielded from the outside universe by an event horizon, a surface of no escape, from which nothing, not even something that moves as quickly as light, can escape to reach an outside observer. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is full of black holes, at least hundreds of thousands, probably millions of them, and a fraction of these black holes live in binary systems, where two black holes orbit each other, spiraling around each other in circular orbits which seem like they should last forever. But they don't last forever. The orbit decays with time, and that's because of the emission of gravitational waves. These two black holes, in their orbit around each other, are constantly accelerating to try to keep up with one another, and that acceleration generates ripples in space-time which carry energy and angular momentum a way to infinity. Because physical systems try to conserve energy and angular momentum, the orbit of the black holes has to shrink in response to this gravitational wave emission. And as it shrinks, the black holes come closer and closer together. They accelerate more and more, and you have this runaway process, which eventually leads the orbit to shrink to nothing, and the black holes to merge with each other in a sort of collision. The orbit decays faster and faster, and the amount of gravitational radiation being emitted increases more and more. The gravitational waves are emitted with more and more strength and at higher and higher frequencies, until eventually they become so strong that we have some hope of detecting them here on Earth during the final seconds of the merger. Now you might be asking yourself, how could we be hoping to see these gravitational waves? The answer is that when gravitational waves pass through you and me, 
as they are doing all the time, they cause small distortions in the space-time that we live in. Uh, simply put, one direction of space-time is stretched, and another direction of space-time is compressed or squeezed. So these gravitational waves from merging black holes, which are constantly passing through you and me and everyone else on Earth, are constantly deforming the space-time and the dimensions that our bodies inhabit. Before you get too worried, I should say that these distortions in space-time are almost inconceivably small, a tiny fraction of the width of a proton or a neutron or an atomic nucleus. These distortions are so small that it requires incredibly advanced physics experiments to have any hope of detecting them at all, and that's where LIGO comes in. LIGO, which is short for the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, uses pairs of four kilometer long lasers to hunt for these tiny distortions in the fabric of space-time. In four kilometer long vacuum tubes, powerful lasers are bounced back and forth by series of mirrors over and over again, so that even tiny distortions in the four kilometer long distance that they're traveling eventually produce measurable changes in the phasing of these lasers as they reach detectors. The idea of using laser interferometers to search for the echoes of black hole mergers in the distant universe was first fleshed out by physicists working in the 1970s. The first prototypes for what eventually became LIGO were built in 1980 and 1981 by teams of experimental physicists at MIT and Caltech led by Ray Weiss and Ron Drever. These first efforts, while incredibly important experimental testbeds and proofs of principle, had no chance of detecting real astrophysical gravitational waves because they were just too small and not sensitive enough. In the decades since these early pioneering efforts, LIGO has grown into a giant scientific collaboration, more than a thousand experimentalists and theorists and data analysts working together to analyze the data from two different laser interferometers to look for signs of gravitational waves. LIGO runs two pairs of laser interferometers. One is located in the high desert in Hanford, Washington, the other in a bayou in Livingston, Louisiana. These interferometers ran for many years at an initial sensitivity, which was not quite adequate to detect gravitational waves from merging black holes. Over the last decade, LIGO's detectors underwent extensive upgrades to increase their sensitivity. They were turned back online in late 2015, and 35 years of hard work immediately paid off with the detection of an event we call GW150914. This event was the first time that the human race had ever directly detected gravitational waves, in this case from the merger of two black holes, each of which was roughly 30 times the mass of our own sun. The black holes whose merger powered GW150914 merged roughly a billion years ago, or in other words, roughly a billion light years away. The peak gravitational wave luminosity of GW150914 exceeded the entire combined electromagnetic luminosity of the observable universe. Again, only for a fraction of a second, but I think that's pretty impressive. Since this amazing first detection in the fall of 2015, LIGO has been in the news uh, several more times for detecting conclusive proof of three more black hole merger events. And that brings us to this week, when the Nobel Committee announced that the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics would be awarded to three leaders in the LIGO collaboration. Now, the Nobel Prize is not the first award that LIGO has received. There have been many awards for the thousand-plus person LIGO collaboration as a whole, and the leadership of LIGO has also received a lot of recognition in the last two years. Previous scientific awards, if they focused on the leadership of LIGO, generally went to two experimentalists, Ray Weiss at MIT and Ron Drever at Caltech, who were recognized as the experimental leaders in the early stages of the LIGO project, as well as to Kip Thorne, a theoretical astrophysicist at Caltech, who also drove the early stages of the LIGO endeavor. Ray Weiss and Kip Thorne in particular were famous for working together as an experimentalist and, a, uh, and as a theorist in the late 1970s to invent much of the basic laser interferometric approach for detecting gravitational waves. There's sort of a famous story about Thorne and Weiss's first encounter with each other. They met at a very overcrowded physics conference in Washington, D.C. in 1975. Because this conference was overbooked, they had to share a hotel room, and they stayed up until 4 a.m. one night, convincing each other that you really needed to use powerful lasers to have any hope of detecting gravitational waves. Sadly, Ron Drever, the experimentalist who was one of the other early leaders of the LIGO project, 
passed away earlier this year, in March of 2017. Had Drever lived, he probably would have been the third recipient of the Nobel Prize this fall, but because the Nobel Committee's policy only allows awards to go to living scientists, Barry Barish of Caltech was recognized instead. Barish, who had a background in leading large experimental particle physics projects, was brought in to lead the LIGO team in the mid-90s during a period of organizational dysfunction. He's generally credited with leading the LIGO project to success during the second half of its existence. Needless to say, the incredible discoveries that LIGO has made in the last couple of years were not just the work of these three individuals, but the much larger LIGO collaboration. And it's safe to say you'll be hearing a lot more from this collaboration in coming years. Not only is LIGO expected to discover more and more black hole binaries with interesting and unexpected new properties, but there are a lot of other cool things we expect to happen in the near future. First of all, sister detectors scattered around the world are starting to come online. A joint French and Italian gravitational wave detector called Virgo already turned on earlier this year and was an integral part in LIGO's most recent detection late in the summer. Black hole black hole merger seen in the summer of 2017 was localized with unprecedented precision because Virgo was operating at the same time as LIGO. Looking further into the future, sister sites in Japan and India are also expected to turn online in the next few years. Overall, I think you're going to hear a lot more about gravitational wave signals in the next few years, both from black holes and neutron stars and maybe even more exotic sources of gravitational radiation as well. The future is incredibly bright and LIGO has opened a new window onto the universe. This immense scientific potential is what led the Nobel Committee to award the LIGO leadership this year's Nobel Prize in Physics, and it has astrophysicists such as myself extremely excited for the new discoveries poised to come out of the LIGO pipeline in the near future. That's it for today. Thanks for listening, and if you found this description of new and exciting astronomical discoveries interesting, check out more videos on the Cool World's YouTube channel. Bye! Powerful lasers are back... Bleh. In powerful vac... Bleh. In four kilo... Bleh. Try again.